Hey guys, welcome to this uh, head tracking tutorial. So today we will be tracking this um, head in 3D space. Uh, as you can see, the point cloud uh, is sticking pretty well to the face itself. And um, the box and everything, so if you want to add stuff in 3D space around the head to follow the head movements, uh, or if you want to slap some textures on the face that will move along with it, uh, this technique would work for that as well. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. Basically, what we want to do is uh, we want to use a camera tracker to track only the head. So to do this, uh, we will need to use a magic mask. So shift space to open up the menu and type in a magic mask and enter. Now, just draw a line here on, the, uh, on our head. So just like this, that did a pretty good job already. Let me just add a few more lines. All right, as you can see, uh, we got a bit more than we wanted. So to remove this, simply hold down the Alt button and then draw a line. So like this. And simply do that to your happy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and we also have um, the possibility to clean up later should we need it. Just to be completely sure the magic mask won't take anything from the background, let me just draw quickly over the background here to sim simply tell the node to ignore all of this in red. So uh, when you're happy with your mask, uh, simply go into the magic mask uh, node over to the panel here. It's set to faster by default for our purposes. This is more than good enough. So hit this middle button here to start tracking. And we're done. So the finger did slip in every now and then. And uh, we could go and add red lines on certain keyframes, but we're not going to do that. Uh, we can clean it up in the camera tracker. So uh, press shift space and add a bitmap node. So, so essentially what this does is that it takes the alpha of the magic masks and turn it into a black and white image like this. Then add a camera tracker pipe the loader into the track like this. Let me just grab the camera tracker node, pull it into the viewer, and then we can drag this bitmap node into the camera tracker like this. So essentially what this is doing is that it's telling the camera tracker to only track inside the white area. So if we go into the camera tracker in the tracking tab here, press preview auto track locations. Uh, let's adjust the detection threshold and then minimum feature separation as well to one, five. Now you can see we have some trackers in the face. Um, the lower you go here, the more detail you will get, but also the longer it's gonna take. So we're gonna leave um, this at 0 0.015 for now. Uncheck preview auto track locations again, and hit auto track when you're ready. All right, the face is tracked. Uh, and as we can see, um, the finger is uh, moving some trackers and some trackers are sliding a little bit. But um, for this purpose, we don't need to care about that too much just yet. For now, move into the Solve tab and then hit, uh, hit Solve. All right, so um, the tracker points um, got some colors to them. Uh, normally it would mean we would go in and tidy up the tracks, but this is not a regular camera track. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to clean up the trackers that are outside the head. So shift space to create a merge 3D. Uh, let's pull this below the camera tracker. And then the camera tracker node has two outputs. One of them is for 2D. So this one does not go into the merge 3D, but this bottom one is 3D. So this one goes in. This is just to preview what the camera tracker is doing before we export a scene of any kind. So as you can see, we have a point cloud here that is resembling a face, which is pretty nice. So with the camera tracker node selected, just go ahead and select any trackers that are not a part of um, the face region. So 
like this, and then just delete them. Uh, the more detailed you are in this process, the cleaner your mesh will be. Oh, and one small tip, uh, if you go into the uh, solve tab here and then show names, toggle all, you can see all of these tracking points that are in the distance way easier. Um, and you need to you need to delete these um, because when you want to UV project this later, then having trackers all the way in the distance will make things uh, a lot more complicated and you will need to redo and it's just a headache. So just remove these, make sure you got all of them. So I'm looking around, I don't see any. Uh, hide the names again and then go back to just cleaning up this point cloud. So it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close enough. So yeah, for the purpose of this video, I'll um, I'll stop there. And this is looking like a pretty nice point cloud of a face. So now we, all we need to do is resolve. So hit solve again. Okay, so now you've um, solved it. Go over to the export tab uh, and then let's choose the 3D scene transform. Click unaligned, select all of the points. This is just to center the scene around the mesh. And then in the origin, click set from selection, like so. And then click uh, from unaligned to aligned again. And then hit export. So now we got this group of nodes. Let me just move them a little bit like this. Um, and if you go into the Merge 3D, the scene looks a lot like the one we just had, uh, which is fine. Oh, and delete the ground plate node, we don't need that now. Uh, if we just view the renderer node and go into the point cloud and hit make renderable. Oh, and scale down the size uh, quite a bit, just so you can see. You can see that the point cloud is tracked to the face quite nicely. So if you just wanted to do a head track in 3D, uh, you are done. You have what you need. So we can add a sphere for demonstrational purposes. Uh, enable a wireframe. And then line it up with the point cloud a little bit. Maybe scale it also so it becomes a bit nicer. Let me just cull the back faces too. You can see this is tracked very nicely to the head. Um, and you can do this with image planes with HUD elements. You can do it with all sorts of 3D models you want to attach to the head. So essentially it's the camera that's doing all the, all the heavy work. So if that's all you wanted to do, then you're done. Thanks for watching. But if you want to take it a step further, let's just delete this. Uh, we can now use this um, point cloud here to generate a 3D mesh that we can slap textures on. Um, and export to other programs like Blender or Maya or whatever it is you need. Uh, so to do this, let's just unhook it from this merge. Uh, go into the menu and search for a custom Vertex 3D. Pipe that in. Now in the custom Vertex node, go in under Vertex Color. Change the red Vertex Color to Position X. Change the green Vertex Color to Position Y and then the blue vertex color to position set. So essentially what this is doing, it's taking the position data of all these points and turning it into colors. So in practice, it's essentially a position pass. Uh, and now we need to render this position pass. So create a UV map 3D node. Here is where um, deleting all of the points in, in the distance uh, was really important because when you hit fit and center on the UV map, if you had points all the way in the distance, this square would be uh, all over the place and it's a headache to work with. But as you can see here, all of the points are inside this square. So, uh, oh, and um, since the head is facing that way, let's just change the orientation to Z like so. And then we need to render it out. So add a render 3D node and we can view this. Change the render type to hardware UV render. And if we go back to the UV, you can see all UV um, 
maps are essentially square. So let's make the renderer square as well. So I'm just going to change the width to 1080. And now we have a UV map. Uh, click the point cloud and just reduce the size of the points. Let's go with dot zero zero two. Okay, so now to uh, put this UV map to use, uh, let's create a displace 3D node and an image plane 3D. Uh, connect the image plane into the displace and the renderer into the displace. And to just see what we're doing, let me just move these two over here. Uh, and we can pipe the displace into the merge. Uh, and now if you're viewing the renderer 3D node, let's just go also and create a wireframe on the image plane. Uh, now you can see we have a mesh on her head. This is not the mesh we want, so um, uh, we need to make a few changes. So in the displace 3D node, go over to the channel, select RGB, and then change the mode from relative to absolute. And now you can see we have something that looks like it's belonging to the head, but it could be better. So to make it better, add a clean plate in between the UV render and the displace and view that. To get the alpha channel back, change the method to ranges. And then all we need to do is just grow the edges. And now you can see, uh, oh, and we can also hit fill. Now we have 3D mesh that's on top of the face. It's a little lower resolution, so we can go into the image plane, increase the subdivisions uh, as much as you want, essentially. Uh, we're gonna go with 32. Um, to make the mesh a little cleaner, we could also add a blur node after the clean plate. If you just blur it, you can see you're cleaning up the mesh quite a bit, which is nice. You can also see this in, uh, in the 3D space here, so it works pretty well. Now, what do we do with this? So what we would do with this is essentially slap a projection on it. Uh, and we will do that by rendering this out as a camera projection in UV space. First of all, go into the camera 3D node, unlock the node, go into the film back menu. You can see our resolution gate fit is at the height. Um, go into the image, uncheck enable image plane, and then go into projection, enable camera projection change the projection fit method from inside to height. Now, if you remove the wireframe from the image plane, go into the camera track, enable lighting. You now have, let's just view this merge 3D node here. You now have a mesh with some texture projected onto it. And now you can do all sorts of fun stuff. So if you go into the render node, change it from hardware render to hardware UV renderer, you get this. Oh, and to remove all black artifacts from projections, in the camera 3D node, uncheck project on back faces. There we go. Now you have a stabilized texture. I mean, it's not perfect. So um, first of all, let's um, change the resolution to a square texture, so 1080. There we go, that looks a bit more normal. Now, if we go add a replace material 3D, pipe the displace into this, and then add the render 3D back into the replace material. Now this looks a little weird, but don't worry, it won't do for long. Uh, add another merge 3D. Pipe the camera into it. Alt and drag the pipe to create a router and um, hide incoming connections. That way you can have some cables without overlap. Uh, add a render 3D and hardware render. For this part, we don't need to enable lighting. If we now were to move this over here and then just add in, for example, a paint node after the UV. So go into the paint. Now, this is not a painting tutorial, but just for demonstrative purposes. Now we can essentially paint or add any texture onto this. So. If you want to add some blood patterns or tattoos or whatever you want, really, you can add them here and they will stick to the face. Let's say you want to add some tattoos or, or some text in this case. Um, let's just write in tat 
two, and you can see that is it's even moving a little bit with the head. But if we view it now, let's just pipe the router to the uh, renderer like this. View it. Control T to switch them around. Now you can see we have slapped some texture onto the head and it's tracking quite nicely. So this concludes uh, the tutorial. Hope you learned something and uh, see you next time.